Hello, and welcome to this presentation about the HPSC scorecard assay for quantitative analysis of trilineage differentiation potential. The PACMAN HPSC scorecard system was introduced in 2013 and is the only test for trilineage differentiation potential that includes both a panel of gene expression assays and accompanying cloud-based analysis software. The gene panel is provided in a convenient pre-plated format that is compatible with both 96-well FAST and 384-well block configurations. On the right is a snapshot of the updated analysis software invert interface, which we will cover in detail later in this presentation. The genes included in the HPSC scorecard panel were carefully selected for upregulation during early germ layer specification, whether by spontaneous or directed differentiation. As shown on this slide, the majority of the genes tested are associated with one of the three embryonic germ layers to provide a high degree of sensitivity to differentiation. This gene content is specifically tailored for early stages of differentiation and is not suitable for analysis of primary or terminally differentiated cells. The genes in the HPSC scorecard panel are shown on this slide. The updated reference set of 11 ES and 2 IPS lines is also shown here. Note that the reference lines were grown on feeders in KSR-based culture medium. We will review results from lines grown in several different culture systems later in the presentation. Now that you've seen the genes on the panel and the lines included in the reference set, let's review the main results page. First, you'll see the name of the file the data shown came from at the top of the page. Sample names are shown in the dark gray header bar and can be modified by simply clicking on the text next to the checkbox. The plus and minus signs indicate whether the sample statistically matches up more closely with the undifferentiated reference set or the EB reference set. Samples that align with the undifferentiated reference set will score a plus for self-renewal and a minus for the three embryonic germ layers. Samples that align more closely with the EB reference set will score a minus for self-renewal and a plus for the three embryonic germ layers. The light gray box plots indicate the range of scores for the 13 lines in the undifferentiated reference set, and the colored dots correspond to the sample scores. As shown here, hovering over a box plot will show values for both the sample score and the reference range. Now let's go into a little bit more detail on how the plus and minus results are determined. Shown here are the distributions of self-renewal scores for the undifferentiated reference set in light blue, and the day 5 EB reference set in green. A sample will be called positive for self-renewal if its score is higher than the threshold depicted by the blue arrow. A sample will be called negative for self-renewal if its score is lower than the threshold depicted in red with the Xs. A sample that scores between these two thresholds will be called borderline, depicted by an open circle in the software. This borderline result is a result of the overlap between the distributions for the undifferentiated and day 5 EB reference data. A positive for self-renewal and negative for the three germ layer sets indicate alignment with the undifferentiated reference set, also shown in the box plot. You will also see that, like any assay, there is always the chance of false negatives and false positives. In an ideal world, these two distributions would be very narrow with minimal overlap. We are often asked why we don't have more lines in our reference set. We chose the 13 lines that are included in the reference set very carefully based on the quality of the data. Increasing the number of lines in the reference set tends to broaden the score distributions, which leads to the mathematical outcome of a higher percentage of false positives and false negatives. Keeping the reference cloud restricted to a small number of very high quality data sets increases confidence in the assay results. However, as you see in this figure, because we are dealing with biological systems with inherent variability, the accuracy of this plus-minus call will never be 100%. This is why we highly recommend testing a line in both the undifferentiated and EB states and comparing the two scores to determine the differentiation potential of a line rather than evaluating a single score in isolation. So to summarize, a plus result for self-renewal and a minus result for each of the three embryonic germ layers is the classic profile of an undifferentiated pluripotent stem cell line and indicates statistical alignment with the undifferentiated reference set. A minus for self-renewal and pluses for the three germ layer gene sets indicates alignment with the day 5 EB reference set, not shown in the software. A 
the borderline result depicted by an open circle is shown for scores that lie in that overlap between the two reference, reference set distributions. Here we show another new data representation. The gray box plots show the range of scores for the 13 lines in the undifferentiated reference set. For those that may be unfamiliar with box plots, they are a statistical representation of a range of values. The top of the whisker represents the maximum value in the data set. The bottom of the whisker represents the minimum value. The horizontal line in the middle represents the median. The two whiskers and two boxes represent the four quartiles of values, half above the median and half below the median. In this case, four ranges are shown for the four different subpanels within the scorecard plate. Each sample score is plotted in a different color for comparison to the undifferentiated reference set. In this case, we are displaying a time course of EB formation, which as expected shows a net decrease in self-renewal gene expression and a net increase in ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm gene expression over seven days. This is essentially the same data that is shown on the main page of the software, but with the addition of a y-axis and the ability to overlay the scores for up to 12 samples on the same graph. This is one of our favorite new software features. This was requested by one of our customers in the UK, and we were pleased to introduce it this year. This heat map shows upregulation or downregulation of each gene in the scorecard panel relative to the undifferentiated reference set. Shown here as an example is the two-week time course of EB formation using each 9 ESC. As expected, the trend is toward downregulation of self-renewal genes and upregulation of germ layer-associated genes over time. You will notice that there are a few exceptions, such as LEFT1, LEFT2, and nodal. Those genes are not upregulated during spontaneous differentiation, but are included in the panel since they respond well to directed differentiation. The panel was chosen for sensitivity to both spontaneous and directed differentiation methods. More data describing this phenomenon is available in Alex Meissner's keynote presentation from this 2014 24 Hours of Stem Cells event. Now that we've reviewed the updates to the HPSC scorecard analysis software, let's go through a few data examples. Shown here are scores for two pluripotent stem cell lines cultured under three different media conditions, KSR-based medium on feeders, Stempro on Geltrex, and Essential 8 on Vitronectin. Note that all media conditions show expression profiles similar to the reference set for the self-renewal factors and comparable or down-regulated germ layer factors. The correlation plot in the lower left shows that the gene expression is highly correlated across all these conditions, and the scores show the classic undifferentiated state profile, plus for self-renewal and minuses for all three embryonic germ layers. The data shown here are the details of the EB time course that we have seen previously in this presentation. H9 ESCs were cultured in KSR-based media on irradiated MEFs prior to removal of FGF. H9EBs were cultured in suspension over the course of 14 days prior to scorecard analysis. The summary shows that the cells are positive for pluripotency. EB formation at day two is positive for ectoderm, but negative for mesoderm and endoderm. As the EB formation progresses from day four to day 14, the scores for all three germ layers continue to increase, whereas the scores for the self-renewal factors decrease. The table with the scores also reflects the same pattern. This slide shows directed differentiation of cells into ectoderm in monolayer culture. As you can see, the three-day time point is too early, but the cells are positive for ectoderm at day five and day seven. H9 cells were differentiated into NSCs using GIBCO PSE neural induction medium denoted here as NIM, and scorecard analysis was performed at various time points. The control sample is undifferentiated H9 ESC. The last example that I will share for today's presentation is data generated with a line that is biased against two of the three embryonic germ layers. This cell line was generated by Dr. Gokai Chen, who previously developed essential eight medium in the laboratory of Dr. James Thompson. The BJBDF IPSC line has classic morphology and expresses many of the traditional markers associated with pluripotency, such as OCT4, NANOG, and TRAWN60. After the cells are injected into mice, however, they do not form a teratoma, only an ectoderm tumor. You will see from the analysis of embryo bodies derived from this line that the in vitro results from the HPSC scorecard assay align with the in vivo results. 
self-renewal markers continue to be expressed even after removal of FGS, and only ectoderm markers are upregulated, not mesoderm or endoderm. Now let's review what we've covered in today's presentation. The updated HPSC scorecard analysis software provides context for the gene scores relative to the reference set. In addition, new data visualization enables rapid comparison of individual gene expression levels. We've shown that cells undergoing spontaneous and directed differentiation show distinct expression profiles as expected. And finally, cell lines with a differentiation bias can be predicted in vitro with the HPSC scorecard assay. Before we close for today, here are a few helpful tips about where to go for more information about the HPSC scorecard assay. Navigate to lifetechnologies.com slash scorecard for additional product information and to view a video featuring Dr. Jennifer Moore. On the scorecard resources page, you will find lots of technical details about the assay and how to get it up and running in your own lab. You may also log into the analysis software and create a demo project from the URL lifetechnologies.com slash scorecard data. Finally, I would be happy to take your questions directly at any time at deborah.tyberg at lifetech.com. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.